Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my December mid-month wrap-up. I managed to read a total of 10 books in the first half of December, so from the 1st through the 15th. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm hoping to get through even more in the second half of the month. Um, I am off work from um, my last day of work the 21st and then I'm off like for the rest of the year. So for that what, 10 days left in the year, I'm hoping to get a lot of books read. Um, so I will now take you through all 10 books that I read in the first half of the month and all my thoughts on them. So the first book that I completed in the month of December was actually a graphic novel. And that was Spell on Wheels by Kate Leth, Megan Levins and Marissa, Marissa Louise. Um, so this is a graphic novel that basically follows three women who are like young women who are all witches and at the start of the story someone has recently broken into their home and stolen something from them so they are basically on a revenge road trip to get back everything that was taken from them um i really enjoyed this it has really great um diversity um we have a black main character an asian main character there are some lgbt things going on in there um, it was a lot of fun. You guys know I love witches. I overall just really, really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. It is also a standalone graphic novel, so it is one that can be read in its entirety just in this one issue and isn't an ongoing series. Next, I listened to two different audiobooks. The first of those is Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. This one is a self-help book slash memoir. It's like got some memoir aspects to it, but it is mainly like a self-help or like empowerment book. Um, this one was just okay for me. It's narrated by Rachel Hollis herself. Um, there, I thought it had some good messages in it, but it is definitely told from a very privileged standpoint, and that comes across a lot. It is also just if this is something that turns you off very heavy-handed on the Christian themes as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I did enjoy it. Also, trigger warnings in it for discussion of suicide um, but yeah, so I enjoyed it, but like it was just kind of okay, and I gave that one three stars. The second audiobook that I listened to was Love by the Numbers by Karen Calmaker. This is basically just a female female romance. It follows one woman who is a behavioral scientist, and she gets a brand new assistant to go on book tour. And it's about these two ladies going on book tour and a possible relationship developing between the two of them. It has pretty good diversity. One of the female leads is um, Indian and the two main characters are both lesbians. Um, and so it's got good diversity. The main thing for me was just that it was a little bit boring. This book has basically zero plot. Like there's nothing going on in it except just the romantic elements. The romance is very slow burn, which I loved. But then having said that, at the end, I do think the romance kind of goes from like zero, zero to 100 really quick. Um, so this is probably would be like a three star, but I'm giving it an extra 0.25 stars just because of the, um, for the fact that it's a female, female romance, because we don't see a lot of just normal, lighthearted romances between two women. Um, so for that reason, I gave it a 3.25 star rating. I should also say that that one is narrated by Kathleen Roche Zushku. Um, I didn't really enjoy the audiobook. I didn't think it was a very like great narration. So if that's something that you really like high quality, um, you know, narrators, then maybe skip this one on audio. Next, I read Lethal White by Robert Galbraith or J.K. Rowling. This is the fourth book in the Cormoran Strike series. It is the newest release. I was very excited to get my hands on this from my library because I've been really enjoying this series. It basically follows a private detective named Cormoran Strike, um, and each of the books has its kind of own um, standalone mystery. Um, I enjoy the mysteries, but I'm really reading the series for the character, the characters and the character relationships and interactions. That's my favorite part of it. Um, it is a 650 page book. So I think a lot of people may find that the mystery is very slow. I didn't really find that. I thought for me that the unraveling of the story, I was very invested in the story and in the mystery and the slow unraveling of it, I personally really enjoyed. And like I said, I just enjoy the characters. So even when there's not a lot going on in the mystery, I'm just happy to know what's going on in the characters. Um, I will say that the, one of the things that kind of lets these books down a little bit for me is that they're not the types of mysteries that I feel like the reader can ever really solve on their own. Even if you maybe guess like the whodunit, you can never really figure out 
even really motives, but definitely not like how things were kind of accomplished. And I, that sometimes frustrates me a little bit as a reader, but I did really enjoy the book and I gave it four stars. I then read Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins. This is the first book in the Sweet series. This is YA. It basically follows um, a girl named Anna who discovers at the start of the story that she is half angel and half demon. She's the only person who is half angel. Um, all the other characters within this type of world are only half demon. So she's very unique. Um, and all of the like half demon type creatures, including Anna, embody the sin of their demon father. Um, so they all embody different types of sins. Of course, the male lead embodies lust. Um, Anna embodies um, addiction. So she has a lot of like draw to alcohol and drugs. That's definitely something to keep in mind that there is a lot of kind of talk about that type of stuff in here. So if that's something you don't enjoy, give it a miss. I enjoyed this. It's pretty cheesy. It's very typical YA of its time, but I did think it was enjoyable. I thought the romance had pretty good chemistry, but yeah, nothing totally amazing, but enjoyable. So I gave this 3.25 stars. Next, I listened on audio to The Best Bad Things by Katrina Carrasco. This one is narrated on audio by Saskia Marleveld. This is a historical fiction that follows a female character who is has recently been dismissed from the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Um, and she has a kind of penchant for dressing up as a man. And at the start of the story, she is basically working for someone who runs, a, a woman who runs an opium smuggling ring and it's all about her trying to kind of infiltrate things and figure out what's going on because a lot of opium has been going missing so on and so forth um i had very mixed feelings on this i liked that it was very like much about women and it was very like kind of feminist in that way like the main character is a woman she's a very strong woman and then obviously like even the fact that we've got a woman who's running the smuggling den um, there's no labels on the page, but it does have LGBT themes. Um, you've also got the cross-dressing thing in there. One of the things I, I found a little bit frustrating was that I, I couldn't quite tell what the author was going for. I wasn't sure if she was trying to represent like some gender fluidity or whether she was going for something like a trans vibe or whether it was just cross-dressing because it felt like maybe she was kind of trying to put in a few of them, but I'm not really sure. I don't know the author's motives in writing the story, obviously. I also just really struggled to connect to the main character because she's very, very full of herself. And without it ever really being warranted, like, she's very tough, but she gets beat a lot and she gets um, kind of outwitted, like, a bunch of different times. And so it just didn't seem warranted for her to just be, like, so kind of up herself to use that phrase so I couldn't really connect to it like that it is a very very fast-paced story there's a lot of twists and turns and I enjoyed that kind of like there's a few quite a few things that happened in the, there that I didn't expect having said that I don't think the audiobook is the best way to listen to this one either because because things were so fast-paced and there was so much going on so quickly I really struggled to keep up with what was going on in audio format I had to rerun the book several different times um, to re-listen to parts to figure out what was going on. So audiobook may not be the best way to um, to like read this story or listen to this story. Um, also, it is very violent. So just know that there's also a lot of really bad language, but it's violent. There is a lot of sexual violence in there. It's consensual sexual violence, but it is like very like graphically kind of violent in the sex in different parts. So yeah, just be aware of all of that. I had pretty mixed feelings about it. I liked some things, had a lot of problems with other things, so I ended up giving that a three-star rating. I then read After Nightfall by AJ Banner. This is a thriller novel about a woman who is at an engagement party, her engagement party at the start of the novel, and we know, like, kind of from the get-go that there's this other woman at the dinner who is an old friend of hers who there was a portrayal in their past, and they're just kind of basically trying to get back on good footing however some things happen at the dinner and then the next morning it is discovered that the friend has is found at the bottom of a cliff we don't know whether she jumped whether she was pushed whether she fell etc and it's about kind of that mystery I had mixed feelings about this one as well I thought that the writing in terms of the dialogue more particularly was a little bit clunky because we get rushed straight into this story we are smack bang in the middle 
of the engagement dinner when the story starts. And so there's a lot of tensions between the characters with them all basically being outright rude to each other. But you as the reader don't understand what's going on. And I don't think it was handled well because it just came across... It just didn't come across well, I didn't think. However, there was a lot in here that I did really like. I thought that the author didn't fall into a lot of thriller tropes, which I really appreciated. For example, there's the main character kind of has something that goes on right near the start. I won't spoil anything, but that she's like, hmm, why would that character be doing that? And she questions them straight away. It's not one of those things where she has a little suspicion in the back of her mind, but she doesn't want to ask them and is just constantly thinking about it and it takes forever in the book for us to figure out what was going on. No, right from the get-go, she's like, what's up with that? I loved that. I also love that she is keeping the police informed of what's going on the whole way through. Again, it's not one of those books where the character's thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I don't want to, like, get anyone in trouble by, like, pointing the finger at someone. I'm like, you don't have to point the finger at someone. You can still give the police all the information without saying, this person did it. And that frustrates me so much quite often in thrillers, so I really, really loved that it didn't fall into any of those kind of tropes. I wasn't super in love with the ending, but, like, overall, it was really enjoyable, and I did, like I said, I really liked that the author didn't go into a lot of those tropes. So in the end, I gave this a 3.75 star rating. I should have mentioned at the top that in addition to the 10 books that I completed, I did also DNF a book. So that was Eternal by C.C. Hunter. This is actually the second book in the Shadow Falls After Dark series. I completed the first book last month. So this is the second in the series. And I had very similar thoughts while reading this one as to what I had in the first one. It's very, very YA. It's very juvenile. And I just, I can't connect to it anymore. It's very similar to what the first series was because this is a spin-off series but I just didn't have a problem with it back then whereas now I just really really can't get into it. And then basically what tipped me over the edge is that there's a scene with two characters breaking into a house and then um, getting trapped in a closet together and oh whoops now we're making out. I'm trash for that trope. I actually really love that but I didn't like that it was done by like oh these two ghosts who were like trying to show us so throughout the story, there's ghosts showing them different things to, like, trying to get them to solve a mystery. And the ghosts take over their body, and it's the two ghosts who are making out, making them make out. That made zero sense to me. It was so just, like, contrived. The ghosts, why would they need to show that you're making out to, like, help you solve this mystery? It's not relevant to the mystery. It was just completely ridiculous, and I found it really, really annoying. And then I thought about it a bit more, I was... I was like, do I even care to find out what's happening in this or to know what's going to happen in the series overall? And the answer was just, no, I don't really care. So I ended up DNFing that one at 56% of the way through. I then read Sweet Peril by Wendy Higgins. This is the second book in the Sweet series. This is very much a second book in the series. I still enjoyed it, but there's not a lot of plot in this one. Um, but I enjoyed it and I was it left me very interested to see where the series was kind of going to finish up. So in the end, I gave this one a three-star rating. The next book that I completed was Between Georgia by Jocelyn Jackson. This is a, I guess it would be described as women's fiction, but it's not like romance based. It's basically about this woman who, she was born to a teenage, it's a very, very convoluted plot. She was born to a teenage girl who didn't want her mother to know that she was having a baby. And so she goes to this other family in the town who have a nurse and basically they deliver the baby and one of the women in that family ends up adopting the baby um, so that this girl's mother will never know that she had the baby. However, when the baby's like three years old, um, it's discovered. And so everyone knows about what went on and we're following that baby as an adult. So there's a lot of tensions between these two families particularly because they live in a very 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 small town in Georgia where there's literally only like 90 people um and then there's kind of an event that takes place right near the start of the novel that really really erupts tensions um I enjoyed this it's not my favorite of Jocelyn Jackson's works but she does write really complex family relationships really, really well. I will say there are trigger warnings in this one for self-harm, but overall really, really enjoyed the book and I gave that 3.5 stars. And then the final book that I read in the first half of December was Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughan. This is a graphic novel. It's a YA science fiction story about a group of teenage girls who have a paper route. So teenage, I think they're 12 years old, who have a paper route. It is... 
the morning after Halloween in 1988, and basically they are delivering their papers when some weird stuff starts to happen. I can't really tell you much more than that without spoiling this first edition, like first volume, sorry. I knew what was kind of going on because I've heard people talk about it, but it would technically be a spoiler for this one, so I'm not going to say anything. I had mixed feelings about this one as well, so I really liked the artwork, particularly the colour palette. It was very much something that I enjoyed looking at. Um, I don't know that this story is for me. It was very, very confusing. There's a lot going on that I was just like, what's happening? The hook at the end to take you kind of into the next volume I thought was really good. And I do think I'm going to read at least volume two and kind of see where it goes. But I think this is going to be a series that is just going to have too many unanswered questions for too long for me to enjoy. So if you have read this series... I'd love to know your thoughts on it because I have very kind of mixed ideas about whether I want to continue. I will be continuing to at least volume two, but will I continue on from there? I guess we'll have to see. So like I said, I just don't know that this is going to be for me. It was okay. And in the end, I gave that one 2.75 stars. So those are all of the books that I read in the first half of December. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below. If you've read any of the books that I've read, if you have any thoughts, or I'd love to know how your December reading month is going. Are you guys getting through the books that you were hoping to get through before the end of the year? I would love to know. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.